The Adventures of Helix, the Little Seahorse. This is the Adventures of Helix, the Little Seahorse. He lives amongst his friends by the sea, along the sandy shores of the most beautiful beach in the world. One sunny day, a little boy, Bobby, was building a sandcastle on the sandy beach. His castle was grand. It had four towers, a grand courtyard, and a big moat around it. The sun was setting as he was filling up the moat, but Bobby couldn't stay and play. He had to go home for dinner. Bobby placed the little crab on the castle tower. Stand guard for me, asked Bobby. Only let the ocean in. With that, he scampered off home for dinner. As the waves crashed onto the shore, inching closer and closer to the sandcastle, the sun was starting to set above the horizon. Whee! Sounds of happy horses accompanied the waves crashing on the shore. The seahorses that gallop up and down the shores, we see them as waves, but young children, animals, and fairies can hear their whinnies and galloping hooves. They play along the shores, leading the tides in and out, grooming the sand. Helix loved to run off from the herd and play with his friends along the shore. His friend Garnet the gull was always the referee. His friend Daphne the dolphin always wanted to play tag. Ellie the eel always wanted to play hide and seek. One day, Helix and his friends were playing tag up and down the shore. Helix and Ellie were neck and neck, racing up and down. Plop! Helix fell into the moat of the sandcastle Bobby left on the beach. A dazed Helix, now trapped in the moat, floated to the top. Huh? he wondered. Where's Ellie? Where am I? What happened? Invasion! Invasion! came a gruff voice from above. Helix was terrified. I am the guardian of this castle. I am the one to protect it from invasion. Helix, terrified, looked up to see a big crab. Just kidding, Chupa chuckled. You fell in the moat. Hi, I'm Chupa. Helix, relieved that he was not alone, tried to jump up out of the moat. <clears throat> he tried and tried and tried. However, he tried, he could not jump out of the moat. As the sky turned dark, Helix cried to himself. He missed his herd. He worried about Ellie. He was very afraid, trapped in the moat all night long. He called out to Garnet. But alas, it was too dark for him to fly. And it was too dark for anyone to see. Oh, Chupa, he looks whinnied. Now what will I do? Chupa looked down kindly from his castle tower. Don't worry, he said. I'll save you tomorrow when the sun comes up. I will dig you a channel to the sea. The next morning, the sun was shining brightly and the tide had gone out. Chupa, look, cried out Helix. The sea is so far out it will take forever for you to dig me out of here. No sweat, declared Chupa. And he immediately clambered out of the castle and began digging a channel for Helix to swim back to the sea. The sun was getting hot. Just then, Helix saw Garnet flying overhead. He whinnied out to ask for help. But Garnet couldn't hear him. As Chupa dug and dug, the sun shone and shone, and the water began to evaporate, sending Helix deeper and deeper into the moat. And then the strangest thing happened. Helix became so hot from the sun, he started to steam. He rose up out of the moat, higher and higher. He looked below at Chupa, still frantically digging. Woo-hoo! He whittied. I'm flying, Chupa! Look! But Chupa didn't hear. Helix rose higher and higher, up into the sky like a little cloud, until Chupa was a mere speck in the ground below. 
He could see Ellie swimming along the shore with Daphne looking for him. He could see Garnet flying over the shore looking for him. But nobody could hear him or see him floating away. As Helix floated away in the gentle breeze, he soared farther and farther away from his beloved beach. Helix started to panic. Help me, help me, help me, he whinnied. But there was no one to help him up here in the clouds. Helix was all alone and very, very afraid. Soon the sky darkened as the sun went behind the clouds. The farther Helix sailed away, the heavier the clouds got. Kaboom! Suddenly, with a flash of lightning, the cloud thundered. Helix screamed with fear. He suddenly felt colder and wetter and heavier. The wind picked up. The clouds started turning and swirling until Helix was feeling quite sick. He started to feel a sinking feeling in his stomach. It started to feel sinkier and sinkier, spinning and sinking and blowing. Helix turned to rain and started to fall to the ground. Ooh, Helix tried to stop himself from falling. The ground was getting closer and closer. Helix closed his eyes. And then, in a million drops of rain, Helix landed safely and gently in a puddle somewhere very, very far away from home. Meanwhile, back at the beach, Ellie and Daphne were looking for Helix everywhere. His herd hadn't seen him all night, and they were all helping to look for him. They swam past the opening of a little pipe, sticking out of the rock, with water pouring out of it, around the corner from the beach. Maybe he fell into this pipe and got swallowed up inside, said Daphne. Maybe you're right, said Ellie. I'll swim up it and look for him inside. Daphne, too big to join her, swam back to join the searching herd. Along the way, she saw Garnet flying above. Garnet, she called. Helix is lost. Help us find him from up in the sky. Helix, dazed, looked around. The rain was pouring down. He didn't know where he was. He tried to get up and gallop, but there was not enough water in the puddle to make waves. As he lay there, listening to the rain beating down around him, he thought he heard a little voice. Hello. He heard it again. Felix looked around. He looked again. Then he finally saw Wally, the little worm, peeking out from the soil at the edge of the puddle. Felix told Wally his story, how he was lost and needed to find his way home. Wally had an idea. Follow me, he said. I know of a wise old he knows the waterways, and I'm sure he will help you. But just then, Wally froze, coming straight at him, diving from the sky, full speed ahead, feet wide open, was Garnet. No! Wally wailed. Don't eat me! Garnet! Helix snorted, just as he was about to jump down on Wally's wall. Garnet jumped with fright and crash landed in the soggy ground. Helix, Garnet gasped. What are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. Helix told Garnet his story and how his new friend Wally was going to help him get home. And you almost ate him, he added. Garnet apologized to Wally and flew off to tell the others the good news. Meanwhile, Ellie was swimming deeper and deeper into the pipe. She was so far inside it began to get too dark to see. Oh no, she thought. Poor Helix. I hope he didn't get lost in here. If he did, he must be so scared. Ellie pushed forward, determined to find her friend. At the puddle, Helix set out to follow Wally down his little hole. Whee! Helix whinnied. It was so much fun sliding down the muddy hole. 
Eventually, they popped out into a beautiful pond under a willow tree. Floating in the middle, basking in the emerging sun, lay the wise old otter. The wise old otter told them they must follow the flow from the pond to where it flowed past the road. There they would find a big metal grate in the embankment. The great grate was the entrance to the great tunnel that went to the sea. The friends thanked him and set off together. Soon they came to the road, like the otter said, and there, hidden amongst the reeds and grasses, was a big metal grate. The great grate, they sang out in unison. Helix hugged Wally goodbye and jumped through the metal bars where he fell down and down and down. Farther and farther, darker and darker. So plop, he fell into a dark pool. Helix looked around. It was narrow, dark, and deep. He was scared. Suddenly, Helix panicked. There under the water, coming at him, he could see a white set of eyes rapidly approaching him from below. Oh, Helix panicked as he tried to make some waves, then pop, out popped Ellie. Ellie, so relieved to have found Helix, almost choked him when she saw him. Helix was so surprised he splashed her in her face. Follow me, Ellie giggled, and together they swam down deep into the dark pool. Helix followed close behind. Ellie led the way to the end of the pipe far below the surface of the underground pool, that she swam up from the sea. The pipe was cold and long and dark and bendy. They swam on and on and on, round and round. The pipe seemed to go on forever. Helix kept wondering how Ellie had been brave enough to come looking for him all this way. Wow, I know she's my true friend, Helix smiled himself as he followed her close behind. Round and round and down and down they swam, round corners and bends, when finally they could see a glimmer of light approaching. It came closer and closer and brighter and brighter until... They cried in unison as they both came flying out of the pipe. With a big splash, they landed back in the ocean by the beach. Daphne and the herd were overjoyed to see them. Garnet told us you were okay, said Daphne. We were so worried you wouldn't make it home again. Helix, Daphne, and Ellie splashed each other with joy, then took off together along the seashore back to the beach. When they got back to the beach, Helix saw Chupa, still frantically digging him a channel down the sandy beach. The tide was coming in, and it was almost up to where he was digging. Helix swam up to him as the tide finally broke into his channel. Hi, Chupa, Helix called out. I'm free. Chupa turned around. When he saw Helix in the water, he was overjoyed. I didn't see you swim out, he said. I did it. I dug you out. Chupa was overjoyed with himself. Thank you, Chupa, said Helix, smiling to himself. You really are a true friend. As the sun began to set along the horizon, the friends relaxed together, and the herd was resting by the shore. Helix introduced Chupa to his friends. As the sun was setting, he told them all about his great adventure. And I almost didn't make it, said Helix. He looked at Garnet. Garnet winked at him. Now that I know they are your friends, I'll never eat worms again, he chuckled. Garnet flew off into the sunset, and the friends cuddled up to sleep.